Uh, I'm newer to working with JavaScript and a few other programming languages, um, but now I'm getting to apply uh, my financial knowledge to creating useful tools. Um, so the first calculator, well, not the first calculator that I've created, but the first calculator that I'm sharing is uh, one that I created um, for the Gordon Growth Model. Uh, now you can use the Gordon Growth Model calculator to determine the value of a stock, the intrinsic value. Um, the model also makes some basic assumptions, which I'll cover uh, along with the Gordon Growth Model formula. But first, I'd really appreciate it if you just tap that like button down below as well as subscribe to my channel. So the Gordon Growth Model formula, what's happening under the hood? Um, it's a simple formula with the following variables. Uh, and I'll list the formula on the screen. Um, so D is the annual dividend. G is the dividend growth rate. K is the required rate of return. Uh, some people also know that as the discount rate. And P is what you're trying to find. That is the price per share or the estimated price per share. So the Gordon Growth Model formula first calculates what the dividend would be next year. And that takes D times one plus G. This is the numerator in the equation. And to simplify it, you can take next year's dividend D1 as in the numerator instead. Uh, and below, you'll find the required rate of return minus the dividend growth rate, that's K minus G. As a result, you get the estimated price per share. Now, this formula is a special case of the dividend discount model. It assumes constant growth uh, and to see this at work, let's look at the expanded uh, discount model. If you're seeing this formula for the first time, it might look complex, but it's really a simple process. Uh, now, you can always use my calculator, which I'll link to in the description below. Um, or once the knowledge sinks in, you can always recreate your own and make modifications. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions, leave a, a comment below. Now let's cover some model assumptions and flaws. First up, the Gordon Growth Model assumes steady growth and steady discount rates, but we know this is unrealistic. The economy ebbs and flows. Many investment trends are at play. And uh, here's one big example. The average investor's required rate of return today uh, is lower um, than when it was when interest rates peaked in the 1980s. So to factor in these changes and other assumptions, analysts have gravitated towards dividend discount or uh, discounted cash flow models. Another kind of flaw with the Gordon Growth Model is that it assumes the company will never cease to operate and never cease to pay dividends. Uh, but with history as a guide, this is a clear flaw. Thousands of companies have gone bankrupt and even the original stocks from the Dow Jones Industrial Average no longer remain in the index. This flaw keeps some people away from using the model, although this downside isn't as bad as it seems. The model puts less weight on dividends as they go further into the future. So here's an example of what I mean. Once again, it looks complex, but bear with me. This example shows the calculation starting with a $2 dividend, a 5% growth rate, and an 8% required rate of return. The first discounted dividend of $1.94 makes up about 2.8% of the calculated total calculated price. Then the next drops to $1.89, which accounts for about 2.7% of the total estimated price. Uh, this continues to drop, and the 100th spot only accounts for 0.2% of the total price. So the further out you go, um, the less weighting the future dividends have uh, in determining the current price today. Now, experts stray away from the Gordon Growth Model because of its simplicity, but that's one of the main reasons I still use it, along with fundamental analysis. Analysts continue to come up with more complicated models. Their confusing stock picking systems are just downright easier to sell to clients, um, unfortunately. Uh, it's also how they justify higher management fees Although active funds underperform the benchmarks they're trying to beat. This has been proven many times over. Uh, a lot of issues with active fund management. A bit of a side note, um, more information isn't always better. As people take in more information to make decisions, their confidence climbs. Although the accuracy of the resulting decisions doesn't always follow suit. 
Uh, this is one of six techniques I use to make better decisions and improve my focus. I'll leave a link um, down in the description below uh, to those six techniques. Now, I appreciate that you stopped by. Uh, I hope my Gordon Growth Model Calculator helps you along with my explanation. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out, leave a comment below. Really, I'd love to hear any feedback and I'd really appreciate it if you just tap that like button down below as well as subscribe to my channel.